Hello friends, so we have successfully installed uh, OpenJDK 17 on Windows box. So now quickly jump to the RHEL uh, 9, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 and uh, let's quickly install the OpenJDK 17 there also and then we can jump to the installation of Ping Federate on uh, the next, yeah. So let's begin. So let's quickly install the uh, OpenJDK 17 on Linux box. So let's open this first. It will not take much time. Again, we just need to do the same thing. Just uh, unzip that file and then Set the path and then just yeah, verify the version and all. Okay, so let's authorize this. Now it's going to open. Stop this thing connecting to SSH server. Okay, yeah. So it's done, okay. It looks fine now. What we need to do? Let's quickly upload the file, okay. Choose file. Let's first go to that cd slash apt and just see. So what we have? There is nothing here. Okay. So let's click on upload file. Choose file. Okay, so let's quickly go to downloads. This is a tar.gz file we have. I basically downloaded from the same uh, place where we have downloaded like uh, in the, I'll, I'll show you maybe. So it's the same place, right? Open JDK, open logic. From there, I just choose this. What is the until Linux x86 64 bit and JTK Let's just put this tar.gz file. I'll just put this link okay in the in the description also. So yeah, let's quickly go there. Uh, no, sorry, I went to the Windows machine. Where is that machine? Yeah. Here we have the machine, so it just said upload files. One moment please. It's going to be uploaded. Transferring one item. Just wait, maybe it will take some time. We can try directly also install like uh, Java using yum install Java, but not sure what version it will install. So let's better to yeah put uh, directly the file as we did in the Windows machine, right? The same way uh, we can just yeah put the open uh, open JDK file. So just yeah just wait, just wait. Yeah, it is still transferring one item. Still, it is taking some time. So we'll just complete the PF10 uh, 
once this is done for the installation of open gtk then we can quickly jump to the installation of ping filter it on pf11 uh, yeah again we covered that in two parts one on the windows another on the linux once these two things are done then again we have the installation of directory server that is open dj on the admin node that is on windows machine we just need to install that installation and configuration we can say 2LN13 uh, so no part uh, we can just do this in a single okay no need of uh, no need to make the part of these videos and once this is done then we are good with the installations and configuration right no need to do any installation for now maybe if required further we can see now after that we can just quickly jump to the uh, configurations inside ping footer like data store building password credential validator building building and we can just try to understand the different types of this uh, PCB and data store. Then the adapter configuration is very very important thing. Uh, maybe I told you in the very beginning videos, right? So now we are going to use that. It's very very important uh, PF16 adapter configuration. We just need to understand on a very bit, uh, on a, I can say, uh, in a very correct way, right? So that like you can you understand how the authentication is basically flowing, right? Because you can design, uh, you can create a logic, but the thing who is exactly handling the authentication, it's the adapter, right? So you need to understand that. Then you have the selector, fragment, policy. These all things just help you to understand how you can build the logic and develop that, right? So yeah, till PF19, uh, it's very important. And then we have few other, a few topics, four or five, and then we can quickly jump to the one of the SAML application onboarding. So maybe I'll just try to do one thing. Uh, I'll just create a developer account on Salesforce and then we can try to integrate Salesforce with our ping federate uh, using SAML. And then we can see that how the things are flowing right in the service provider initiated SSO as well as in the identity provider initiated single sign on. So we can just try to understand this. Okay. And then our OAuth start that is again more very, very important thing. We need to understand each and every concept of the OAuth. Uh, basically the grants right in OAuth we just need to understand we can use our postman also to do some testing right with all those grants first we'll try to understand the grant and then we can just see right how how that grant is basically working right uh, using postman first we do the configuration in ping footed and then with the help of postman we can just do some experiment do some test but the most important thing we need to understand exactly how this grant is working in OAuth right whether refresh token device flow client credential resource owner or any of these right okay i think yeah uh, it's still taking some time so just wait for a minute and then we can see if this is causing any issue or yeah what is happening okay so basically the file is transferred now Alerts. we are in which directory so we are in the basically home of Vishay cards to double one okay so let's go here Okay, so we can see our open logic open gtk file tar.0 is uh, present. So let's do one thing like first we need to just uh, extract this and uh, we can update the permission also, right? So let's do the permission part first. Ch mode open r triple seven open logic. So I update the permission of this. Okay, so it's a read write. Uh, maybe you can just go and get this basic done from the Linux if you are not have the idea. So I basically updated the permission uh, for this file. Okay. Now let's do one thing. We have the command tar hyphen xvzf i think just let me verify xvzf okay xvzf and then just put our open logic tar.cz file okay now click on enter just wait it will extract everything okay it looks it's done let's check again okay so yeah we have our linux 64 x 64 its directories came okay now uh, let's open that directory also sorry cd open logic linux 64 so you have man release legal j mode so all the modules should be there let me check for the module j mods
Okay, all the modules are there. Okay, so it looks fine now. What we can do? Let's come back. pwd to give us the current directory okay so we are in the bishik at suitable one so now what i'll do now i'll just uh, go and create a directory in in or i'll just re uh, rename the for directory name okay so what i'll do let me open this i'll just move this to opt folder okay opt directory i'll say so we have this so what i'll do let me go to first inside this cd open logic 64 Uh, okay, let me come back. I think so. What I'm trying to do now basically, I'm just trying to move this directory, uh, this one open logic one to opt. Okay, so what I'll do, there is a command called move. Okay, mv. So I'll put mv, then I'll give the file name. Okay, open logic. Okay, then I'll put slash opt slash. I think it should take. Let's see. Cannot move to this uh, permission denied. Okay, it says permission denied. So I think uh, let's go to opt folder. I think maybe it looks like it's not giving permission to move there. Series class opt. Let's do one thing. Let's uh, go to root. Okay, sudo su. Okay, now we are in the root, right? So basically, root is have the complete permission, right? So now what I'll do? Let me go back again to where I am. Pwd. Okay, now cd slash so. Once you're familiar with this Linux, now you will enjoy. You will not go to again work for the Windows. Okay. So we have this open logic file now. Let's try to move this directory. Open logic to slash opt slash. Yeah, it's done. Okay, so now it's allowing because we have the root permission. Now you can see the directory moved to the opt folder. Now let's go to opt and we'll uh, we'll just try to rename the directory name. Okay. So what we can do? Let's go to cd slash opt. So yeah, we have this file now. Uh, okay, so now if I can, if I can just put uh, ch mode, uh, sorry, not ch mode. Like, let me go to this directory. Just want to show that everything is placed now. There is nothing got changed. Okay, yeah, it looks fine. Now let's come to back one directory. So we are right now in pwd, and we have the file. Not now what we'll do we'll just try to rename this so rename is just like we can put mv open and then you can just put the whatever you want to put a name so uh, let's put the same what we did in the window so open jdk 17 okay open jdk 17 looks fine enter now let's open this Okay, so it looks fine. I'll just give permission ch mode triple seven to this also. Open JDK seventeen. Okay, so this is our executable file also. Now, now we just need to basically set our path. Okay, so basically we are in the opt open JDK seventeen. So and then we need to set our uh, path and the Java home. What we did in the Windows, right? So right now, if you put Java iPhone iPhone version it will it is not going to give command not found Java iPhone version I think command is correct maybe uh, I think it's correct only I feel just a second let me verify quickly I'm sorry
yeah java space hyphen version is correct only so yeah you can see there is an issue in that okay yeah maybe once we set the path then we can check maybe that's why it's not coming right now it's not recognizing right now we have uh, sorry uh, we have the executable file of open jdk okay now let's set the java home export then java underscore home equals to you have that slash opt slash the directory name open jtk hyphen 17 open jdk hyphen 17 looks fine now go for the path setting export path equals dollar then you need to put path then put colon then this give the java home and the I've been how we set there in the windows in the similar way right so dollar then you have the java underscore home and then again put uh, that slash bin okay let me check if it is correct or export path is equal to dollar path colon then dollar java underscore home basically is bringing the the first one right the the java home directory using that and then you have slash pin okay it's fine enter now let's just put echo to see that whether its path is set or not echo dollar java underscore home okay yeah so open jdk 17 it's set okay you can put echo dollar path you can show us that also Okay, uh, okay bin. yeah it looks fine now what we can do we already set the java underscore home and path now let's uh, check for the java version okay yeah so it says open jdk version 17.0.11 so it's fine okay let's put java c hyphen version java c 17.0.11 let's put json use a precious directory okay welcome to jsl version 17.0 okay yeah so this looks good so we we already completed here okay so this is basically done uh, we have installed the java set the path on linux machine also so yeah if you want to see the uh, uh, linux version okay rhl version what is installed here so then just put cat slash etc slash os release okay cat etc os release this will give you the version okay so name red hat enterprise linux then you have version 9.4 plow id rhl id like fedora version id 9.4 platform id pretty name ans color logo and all those things you can see okay yeah, so let's quickly go for the next uh, video.